Welcome to a proof of the power rule of differentiation, which is the derivative of x raised to the power of n with respect to x equals n times x raised to the power of n minus one. This proof uses the binomial theorem, so let's begin by reviewing this. The binomial theorem is used to expand binomials when we have a binomial raised to a whole number power. So if we have the quantity x plus y raised to the nth, the binomial theorem gives us this expansion. Where notice how the first term would be n choose zero times x to the nth times y to the zero. And then we have plus n choose one times x to the power of n minus one times y to the first. Plus the next term is n choose two times x to the power of n minus two times y squared and so on. Notice as we move to the right, we are losing factors of x and gaining factors of y and the coefficient is determined by a combination where n choose r is equal to n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. So if we begin with the function f of x equals x to the nth, by the definition of the derivative, f prime of x is going to be equal to the limit as h approaches zero of f of the quantity x plus h, which in our case would be the quantity x plus h raised to the nth, and then we have minus f of x, which in our case is x to the nth, all divided by h. And now we use the binomial theorem to expand the quantity x plus h raised to the nth. So our next step, this looks a little intimidating, but all of this is the expansion of the quantity x plus h raised to the nth. Notice on the far right we still have minus x to the nth. The next step we want to evaluate these combinations to determine the first several coefficients. So here we see that n choose zero is equal to one, n choose one is equal to n, n choose two is equal to n times the quantity n minus one divided by two and so on. And just for review, let's evaluate these combinations to verify the coefficients. So n choose zero is equal to n factorial divided by r factorial, that'd be zero factorial, and then times n minus r factorial, which in our case would be n minus zero factorial, or just n factorial. Zero factorial is defined as being equal to one, and therefore this simplifies to one, which is why this first coefficient is one. And then we have n choose one, which is equal to n factorial divided by one factorial times n minus one factorial. If we expand n factorial, we can write n factorial as n times n minus one times n minus two and so on, or just n times n minus one factorial divided by one factorial times n minus one factorial. Simplifying, notice how this simplifies to n, which is our second coefficient. And let's look at one more, n choose two would be equal to n factorial divided by two factorial times n minus two factorial. And now if we begin expanding n factorial, we'd have n times n minus one, but the remaining terms would be n minus two factorial. We divide this by two factorial, and then we have n minus two factorial. So these two simplify to one, so we have n times n minus one divided by two factorial, which is just two. So again, we have n times n minus one divided by two, which we see here in our expansion. Now we want to begin simplifying. Notice here we have x to the nth minus x to the nth. So these two terms simplify out, which gives us the limit as h approaches zero of this fraction. Now looking at the numerator, notice how all of the terms contain at least one factor of h. So for the next step, we'll factor one factor of h out of the numerator. So this first line is the same line from the previous slide. And the second line here is where we factored out one factor of h from the numerator. And notice once we do that, we can simplify this fraction. h divided by h simplifies to one, which gives us the limit as h approaches zero of the sum of these terms. Now if we look at these terms closely, Notice all the terms contain at least one factor of h except this first term. We have one factor of h here in the second term. And remember each term after this is going to have one more factor of h 
until this last term has n minus one factors of h. So again, all the terms except the first term has a factor of h, and therefore, as h approaches zero, all the terms except the first term are going to approach zero, and therefore the limit is just going to be this first term n times x raised to the power of n minus one, and we have our proof of the power rule of differentiation. The derivative of x raised to the power of n with respect to x equals n times x raised to the power of n minus one. And of all the differentiation rules, this one is probably used the most in differential calculus. And now you know where it came from. I hope you found this helpful.